For me, the notion of impact is to try to do things because we honestly believe that um, there's a problem that should be solved. Business of Architecture, episode 329. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. I'm Enoch Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for building an architectural practice that lets you do your best work more often. Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture step-by-step business training program for architecture firm owners that shows you how to structure your practice so you can focus on doing your best work instead of being bogged down with the complexity of running a business. Build the business you need to focus on and do the work that you want. Discover more by going to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash smart. Today I speak with Geronimo Van Skindel. Geronimo Van Skindel is a Harvard trained architect who is currently the director of the master's degree program in business in architecture and design at the IE University in Spain. In today's episode, Geronimo shares the three qualities he feels are most important in the intersection of architecture and business, and he also shares about this new program that the IE University has launched that combines and explores the intersection between entrepreneurship, business, and architecture. So with that, here's my interview with Geronimo von Schindel. Geronimo, welcome to the Business of Architecture podcast. Thank you very much, Enoch. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, please start by telling us what it is that you do. Yeah, so I'm an architect. I was uh, I graduated from uh, UPM uh, at SAM in Madrid uh, 10 years ago. And since then, I've been exploring and working on the intersection of design, spatial design concretely, and entrepreneurship. Um, what would be, you know, uh, technology entrepreneurship and, and business management. So currently, I am uh, the academic director of the Master in Business for Architecture and Design at IE University in Madrid, which is a university that has uh, a campus in Spain, but also uh, an online campus. So basically, my students come from all over the world, uh, actually 20, 20 nationalities. Tell me about when you say the, the intersection between entrepreneurship and architecture, what does that mean to you? So it's about uh, looking at uh, the, the action or the, the day-to-day of the architect from a, an entrepreneurial perspective, let's say, to um, get more proactive, if you want, on our day-to-day, to look at uh, problems and uh, to look at how these could be turned into opportunities and how we could challenge, let's say, um, the, um, the traditional or the historic role of, of the architect that uh, is quite extended in, in you know, in many countries. Excellent. And what, what examples have you seen that, that really exemplify the idea of what you think is, is the intersection of entrepreneurship and architecture? Can you help me understand yeah, your viewpoint on that? Yeah, absolutely. So I could give you uh, one that is more from within, let's say, the practice of architecture and, and some others that are more Uh, a little bit farther, but still, I believe, quite rooted into uh, what is spatial design, which is the core of of our profession, right? So um, some examples of entrepreneurial thinking are, for instance, the initiatives of uh, shop architects, um, the the American practice, that, uh, you know, they don't really stop into what the architectural practice is uh, per se, which is a fundamental part of our work and a fundamental part of our value or the value we deliver to society, but they also um, identify problems such as the, the difficulty to really uh, assess what is the best uh, volume and the best uh, profit that you could actually take in terms of quality space and, and also the, you know, the economic and the spatial model of uh, a building in, in New York. And then out of that, they started the initiative of building the, the app that is now called, I believe, Envelope. That's one, one, uh, one way to see it. But then, we have also, um, to give you another different sense of that, we have a strategic partnership with uh, UN Studio in the, the MBR, the program I lead, which is, uh, for those who are not familiar with it, it's uh, uh, quite a renowned Dutch uh, firm, which is the author of the Mercedes-Benz Museum in Germany. And uh, they, instead of having, you know, an, uh, let's say, a, a structure in which there is a principle and then uh, several layers um, and then, in a way, direction comes from, from up, uh, 
uh, top down. Uh, they have structured their office in units, and each of these units has a sort of mission, um, a mission which is basically ask, you know, what if, um, you know, we could look at the space in one or another way, depending on the type of, of, of unit that they have. One is about sustainability, another one is about, um, you know, the interior, another one is about really looking far from now, and so on and so forth. And as a result of that, they have uh, created some initiatives such as the solar visuals, uh, which are these panels that um, they basically identified that the problem to be addressed was that uh, solar panels are something quite uh, awkward at the moment, in, not in terms of the technology, but in terms of how it couples with the built environment. So they, they um, partnered with um, a transdisciplinary team and they developed these panels that can actually take different patterns uh, and be adapted, uh, and then they can be uh, installed in different environments of the building and uh, act as a sort of um, smart grid, right? And then finally, um, there's a third example, which I think is really interesting. It's a company, a young company of three architects and, um, pro uh, and, and coders. Um, uh, one of them is a data scientist and two of them are really software developers that uh, are from Madrid and they have founded this uh, called Urban Data Eye. And it is a company that basically came up with an algorithm to uh, extract patterns of movement from a very low resolution footage of the public space. Um, and actually, you know, the, the world is full of CCTV cameras that are looking at us uh, in, in different ways. They look at those that are um, that guarantee privacy uh, in terms of the resolution of the footage, and they extract from there different patterns of movement. And they, they are really, really successful and precise. They can trace uh, a mass of different people moving uh, by the individual, so getting the, the trajectory of all the individuals and the measurement of when they stop their speed and all that. And they can also differentiate between objects uh, for for age ranges and different patterns that uh, give us a lot of information about the city and about um, you know how we use space which is something that uh, has been quite difficult for architects to you know, it has been quite difficult for architects to get data about that and inform decisions right so when we talk about this idea of entrepreneurship architecture space making and the business side what would you th in your opinion what are the most critical components that architects should grasp to be able to help them achieve their goals, which is generally being able to get great commissions, influence the built environment, work with fun and exciting projects and, and clients. Yeah, so I, I believe that um, the strategic component of our work is um, quite often forgotten, I think. Um, it is, you know, let, for, to, to give you a sort of typical situation, you know, you get the, you get the commission uh, and, at that point, there's a brief that is already somewhat uh, developed, right? Um, and then the, the, let's say, most extended case, uh, I don't want to be too general, but the most extended case is that you respond to that brief, right? Um, and then you respond, of course, in the most imaginative, creative, and valuable way you can. But you could climb up uh, one step, you know, up, uh, basically, um, and start adding more value in the, on the strategic definition of what is that brief, what is that action that should be um, taken and transformed through uh, design. And I think that, that reflecting on how we can um, expand our role in that particular step of the value chain is uh, very important. I think uh, very few profiles uh, bring together the analytical, the technical, and the creative sides uh, into one single professional, let's say. So I think it's really valuable as a, um, as a profile for very different industries and for very different problems. Excellent. So what I hear you saying is that when whenever we get a brief or whenever we're, we're pursuing a project or going after something or looking at putting out a proposal on some work, that there always exists an opportunity to almost redefine the brief almost take a look at what, what's what's the step before Let, let's take a strategic look at this and say is this even the best solution is that what i'm hearing yes exactly yeah it, that's 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 what i'm saying i, I could give you an example uh, another um, office that i think is is doing brilliant work is called architecture zero zero they're in uh, in uk uh, particularly in london and they they of course do great buildings um 
you know, for those who are interested, they can go and see. But um, on top of that, when they got some commissions, uh, the understanding I have from, from what I know about them is that, for instance, they got a commission to, to do a co-working, right? And a co-working is, um, is a space to share a number of um, different experiences around the core action of work, right? Uh, with a, with a co-working manager that curates that. Um, but it, behind that, there are also implications in terms of uh, facility management, in terms of program planning of that, in terms of uh, even positioning of that particular space. And they have uh, added that value to the very design of, of that such co-working, in this case, um, a number of them in, um, in London and cities in, in UK, and they started taking over that um, role of, of really defining what is the, the whole experience and how is the management of this co-working um, chain, right? Which is, um, um, I'll tell you the name now. Uh, I just, I'll, I'll tell you the name in a moment of this, uh, the, the, the branch of co-working that they're actually assessing and managing. Okay, fantastic. Well, great, great example. So tell us, tell us what's happening at, at IE University. I mean, the university has always been a, a leader, um, not only in Europe, but also in the world. And, you know, bringing in a, this business aspect, tell us about what's happening there at the university with the program. Yeah, so, absolutely. So the university was born um, so, uh, already four, four decades ago. Uh, five decades ago already almost um, and it was um, it was born as a business school originally but then it started growing um, and what is very interesting is that uh, one of its first moves when it be when it moved from becoming you know a business school to a university which is basically an institution with a much wider approach was to introduce uh, architecture and that was um, not so long ago already after 2000 and they did that because not only because the university leadership at that time uh, had a um, strong link or, or, or um, they believed in the value of architecture, but also because they thought it was a, a sort of um, discipline that is in between the technical, um, the, the, the whole built environment, which, a lot of, uh, which has a lot of uh, value, the humanities, and could uh, link well into the business side. So they've been building, actually, our, our, our architecture school was built from an initial program that was not called MBR, it was called MAMD, Master in Architectural Management and Design. And it was originally, the first value proposition was bridging the gap between you know, the world of business and the world of design. Since then, uh, not only the school uh, has grown uh, greatly and, and brought uh, different programs that I could speak about afterwards if you feel it's interesting, um, but also the university has been, has been growing strongly and both have um, consistently um, bet on the online learning and online teaching, online environments. So we were the first university to introduce an online master in uh, 2000 in Europe. And since then, we've been having pretty much half of our offer uh, either online, either on a blended format, which is a format that uh, combines face-to-face -face periods or residential periods and online teaching. So at this moment, uh, and more importantly, or, or quite interestingly, with uh, the current situation, we are even pushing stronger towards um, towards a, a digital scenario. Right? Uh, we are at the moment we have seven thousand students, and uh, all of them are um, studying online. So we moved all the programs that we had uh, face to face immediately when COVID started to to be able to teach uh, online, and we we were lucky to have that uh, background work so that we didn't have to even stop uh, our classes one day. So that's, um, that's interesting. But I would yeah. say, just to wrap up, uh, that uh, what, what is distinct uh, about our School of Architecture and Design particularly is that it, every, every program that we, we initiate or that we launch, regardless of its, um, of its focus, I mean, it might be you know design, it might be architecture, it might be real estate, it might be um, what we call strategic design of spaces, which is another, in short, um, um, related to the interior world or the master in business for architecture and design. All of them ha have this vision that the that business and design in the end are stronger together. That's sort of a a, um, a spotlight for us, right? 
and um, and I, I would say that that's uh, that builds on an idea that we have that really the architect and that links back to the first things I was saying that the architect could have a, a, a quite um, quite a bigger role or quite an ampler role in society spe specifically um, adding more strategic uh, components to the value chains in which it has uh, traditionally acted. So what what could a what could a student expect to get out of attending the uh, the master master in the business of architecture program? Yeah, so it's a, it's a master of fifteen months um, with a concrete format that is blended learning. So we have uh, within those fifteen months we have three periods of uh, what we call face to face periods of two weeks: one period in Madrid, one period in Amsterdam. A final period in Madrid with a post graduation um, trip to London. And uh, the rest uh, happens online. And we basically organize a program around four modules and two learning platforms. These four modules are entrepreneurship, which is a core module. And it's basically building on the entrepreneurial process, uh, discovery of, of industry problems, uh, learning to analyze you know, and, and question the status quo. Uh, framing problems as opportunities and then being able to um, transform those into solutions uh, that deliver value to, to society. Um, then we have a, a module on management which uh, covers the, the core, you know, the, the, the core of management in reality, so financial planning, strategic management, uh, the marketing side, uh, project management, uh, and so on and so forth. And then we have two modules that um, are coupled in between those core uh, entrepreneurship and management, which are innovation and technology in practice, which is about um, innovating in the type, in the way in which we deliver service to clients and in uh, you know, digital transformation. And uh, another module, which is on leadership, which is about the three levels, that what we call the three levels of leadership is the individual level, it's about reflecting on what you believe an architect should be doing and what you would like to be as an architect as well. Um, then um, scaling it up to uh, the interpersonal um, level in which you can start leading other professionals or influencing other professionals. And finally, learning how to convey a message to the whole realm or uh, a, big, a wider community for, uh, you know, for, for, for good. And then all these uh, four modules um, are constant all along the program. So students have courses of, uh, that are combined between those four modules. And as well, uh, they have um, uh, these two learning platforms. One of them is a venture lab, so entrepreneurship lab, that has two parts. One is called um, Venture Discovery, and it's focused on students um, analyzing the industry really as holistically as possible. And, and uh, selecting a number of problems that they think it's, uh, they could you know, invest some time into trying to solve. And then a second part, which is a venture lab in which they um, define groups to work on those problems and end up producing um, a comprehensive business plan and, and, uh, and basically a business uh, project. Not only the business plan, but also uh, some of the, uh, the initial prototypes, the testing with the market, if, if, the, if it is the case. Um, and of course, presenting that and communicating that to the educational community. And finally, uh, we have something that is called um, Business of Design Lecture Series, which is a, a number of visits and, and lectures, which is varied, but is around 25 to 30 per year, and that we have both online and face to face, but specifically, this becomes more intense in Madrid, Amsterdam, and London. And it's, a, it's a, a cycle in which we visit different actors and stakeholders of the construction industry, of the built environment, with a particular focus in architecture and spatial design. So we look at and we go and interact with different companies. And we, we speak, uh, of course, about design, but we mainly speak about how they manage to, to get where they are, how they, do, how they run business uh, directly. Uh, why they do it, and uh, we focus very particularly on the specifics of each of these uh, companies. So, if we are going to um, let's to give you an example, uh, for instance, uh, Foster and Partners, we could speak about a particular idea about the, the practice itself, which is it's divided in studios, and then how do they manage the different studios? How do they uh, manage the brand internationally, and so on and so forth. If we go to uh, Architecture Zero Zero, for instance. 
we, we could speak about how they have uh, run work collaboratively between different members, how they can, they have worked with open source uh, projects. You know, it's about really finding the specifics of every practice and how that relates to the way in which they build business. And one of the things that is very important for us, it's breaking this boundary of only relating to architects um, and thinking that, you know, architecture is only for, or, or, or something only to be discussed between architects. We try to bring uh, into this cycle, as a result of this idea, we try to bring venture capitalists uh, that are starting, you know, it's, it, it, it's, it's quite a, a trend, and I hope it stays after COVID, but it's quite a trend that investment is, is really growing in the, in the construction industry. So we bring uh, venture capitalists and, and people who are trying to disrupt uh, our fields from outside, if you want, even big corporations that come in from manufacturing, such as Cemex, the, the Mexican cement produ producer that has built uh, a venture fund that has uh, its base in Madrid. We interact with them, but we also interact with some real estate developers, such as you and I in London, uh, to understand how they think and to be able to basically emphasize, um, empathize better and connect better with what you know the different stakeholders of our industry want, because in the end, it's about uh, being impactful, right? So that's, mm. that's more or less the, the experience. Geronimo, a question for you. If, you. if you were parachuted into a city somewhere and, and you could only take, or someone, an architect, could only take three attributes or principles uh, to run a successful, the business side of architecture, what would those attributes or skills be? Yeah, so one of, I think... Okay, that's a, that's a pretty good question, actually. Um, one of them would be collaboration. And I would say um, even more, more than collaboration, co-creation. Um, I think it's, the, it's very important. It's a, it's a shift from the notion that architecture is created with a sort of uh, um, unexplainable inspiration. I think that was a, a sort of old trend, in my opinion. And then now we are moving, or we should move much more towards a, a really a, a model in which we embrace everyone to, to bring ideas and to find a way that in which we can really co-create inside and outside the practice. That is one. Um, the second one would be agility. Um, I think agility is really about um, interacting with, um, with inside the practice, but also with, with the world, with your clients, uh, as fast and as honestly and transparently as possible and really getting on the go, you know, uh, instead of getting prepared to do things, just doing things and then um, evolving with that. Um, and the third one, the third one, I think, would be the notion of impact, honestly. Um, uh, for me, the notion of impact is to try to do things because we honestly believe that um, there's a problem that should be solved, um, identifying that. And I think there are a number of inspiring practices that work um, as a result of that. Um, yeah, that, that, that's what I would say. Always, when you go to an island or you get parachuted, you, you know, you say, I would get the knife, but then you always, when you're in the island, you forget the, the I don't know, the, the matches or whatever other thing. So I'm sure I'm le leaving something behind, but anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where can people go to find out more about the IE University, the program, and then your work as well? Yeah, so the, um, I, I would say that we have many channels. One of them that is the most complete probably is our website. Uh, if you do IE um, School of Architecture and Design, you enter into the website and then there you have all the programs. Um, but also we engage uh, through um, Instagram. We are having these days a number of uh, leave sessions with different people from um, from the, the different branches in which we uh, provide education uh, and it's at IE Arc Design. Uh, we could probably, uh, I could probably share that more in detail with you afterwards. And then through LinkedIn, uh, following my name, which is not easy to spell, but I'm sure that uh, listening to the podcast, they can find the right path. Um, I share a number of things and then on LinkedIn, we are really very, very active myself and all the directors of other, of the other master programs that we, that we have. Uh, by the way, we have um, a number of online um, sessions uh, that are lectures 
that we 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 invite everybody to really join us. It's uh, we are having pretty much one one per week with very different stakeholders on the industry. So um, we are more everyone is really more than welcome to join us, and we hope they they enjoy. Excellent. And where could they go to find those lectures? Would that just be on the website? I th yeah. So the 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 easiest way is to look through the website and through our channels, LinkedIn, uh, mainly LinkedIn, uh, IE School of Architecture and Design, and um, and uh, the website to see where the where the, all these events are are highlighted. Yeah. If if there's an event, we'll be uh, informing the people quite um, quite extensively. So so they'll, they'll, they should know about it. Wow! Amazing. Well, thank you for joining us today on the Business of Architecture podcast. It's been a pleasure, Enoch. Thank you very much. And that's a wrap. Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Practices, the world's leading step-by-step -step business training program that's helped more than 103 architecture firm owners structure their existing practice so the complexity of business doesn't get in the way of their architecture because you see, it's not your architecture or design skills that's holding you back. It's the complexity of running a business, managing projects and people, dealing with clients, contractors, and money. So if you're ready to simplify the running of your practice, go to businessofarchitecture.com forward slash smart to discover the proven, simple, and easy to implement smart practice method for running a practice that doesn't get in the way of doing exceptional architecture. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.